Yo, what up nerds? Welcome to the first video of my Warframe loadout series I wanted to make for you guys. This is just a series of videos that I wanted to make to showcase some of my favorite builds that I've stumbled across in Warframe over the, you know, past 5,000 hours or whatever that I have playing the game. Um, I'm not taking credit for any of these builds, nor am I claiming that they're the best versions or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to break some of this down for you guys so you guys can understand what's going on and and just so i can show you guys some of my favorite builds in the game but without further ado man let's get on into it So taking a look at the double Umbra Saren, it does have three Umbra Forma in it, but as you can see, you can take out one of the Umbra Forma and that cost will go up to 16, right? And we would have two capacity left. So you can save an Umbra Forma. Also, this again does run Energize. It also has Prime Flow and Continuity in it, Adaptation. So, and also you don't need Prime Sure Footed, but again, if you have it, use it. So like I said, the build is fairly expensive. Now, there are a lot of different options for you here. If you don't have Tri Umbra mods and you don't wanna go that route, you can go another route. And like I said, I'll show you that here in just a second. But before we get into that, something to note, the things that are important on this build is strength. You want a good amount of strength, decent duration because you wanna keep your roar and your toxic lash and everything up as long, you know, if you don't mind recasting your buffs every 20 seconds, then you can play that way. But I, I can't stand doing that. So I keep my duration fairly high, high strength. The more range you have, the easier your spores spread. If you don't care about your spores spreading, you can even drop range. I can show you that again in the other build. But other than that, pretty, pretty standard stuff. You want to make sure you run Venom Dose, Tri Umbra Adaptation for a bunch of defense, Continuity for Duration, Bolt Augmented for Power, Strength, uh, the longer you're in the mission, it stacks up to 60%. And now the other build that I can show you guys that doesn't use any Umbra form in it. Like I said, all you really care about is a really good amount of strength and good duration. The efficiency does not matter in this build because we are using three for spite and two auger mods in our secondary weapon. But again, we are using Energize, Prime Flow, Continuity, Adaptation, a very high amount of strength. Now this build doesn't have any range in it, so I'm not gonna be spreading spores very well. But for a weapons platform build, where the Sobek acid shells are spreading everything within 15 meters regardless, uh, that's just, again, I'm just trying to show you guys that there are options. So if you do have a double Umbra form with Saren laying around, maybe try the other one. If your Saren doesn't have any Umbra form in it, Maybe try this one. I just wanted to show you guys a couple of different options that you could go with. Uh, but as far as the Sobek build itself goes, the only thing that I ever change in this build is the faction mod that I'm going against. So if you look at my loadouts, so there's just one for each different faction. That's the only thing that changes. The only thing that we really want in this build is damage and toxin. Crit doesn't really do a whole lot for us. The mod that's carrying the weapon is called Acid Shells. Enemies explode on death, dealing 450 corrosive damage, plus 45% max enemy health in a 15 meter radius. So we're basically using acid shells to spread our toxin around within 15 meters of the enemy. So an enemy dies, it spreads toxin and does 45% of its maximum health. So it's very, very, very effective. The Exilus slot is a flex. I do like running Merciless for the reload speed plus the damage. Um, I usually put um, the galvanized acceleration in here. Like I said, you don't need it if you don't want to put that many forma in it. You cannot run it and save a forma here. Uh, but like I said, the only thing that really ever changes is the faction mod on the Sobek. The Riven is damage toxin status chance. Uh, the status chance doesn't matter. So ideally, I would like to have a damage toxin with a negative like zoom or something like that. You know, a harmless negative. That would probably be ideal for me the way that I would like to play the build. 
the secondary really doesn't matter. I'm just running a new core with two auger mods in it, like I said, because I'm trying to shield gate a little bit with the brief respite and the low efficiency. Uh, we really don't use the new core for really anything at all other than the auger mods. The dual icker I use for acolytes. The only thing, I mean, it's pretty standard melee influence build with electric. Uh, the only thing I ever change on this build is the faction mod once again. Now, something to note for Focus Tree, you have two different options. Option number one, Vazarin. Vazarin is the defensive route because of Protective Sling. Allies touched by Void Sling, meaning you have to go into Operator and then Void Sling into the Warframe. Like, you have to dash and actually hit the Warframe. Um, and if you do that properly, your Warframe will become immune to damage for 5 seconds and get healed for 60% over the 5 seconds. And the funny part about this is you could just do this over and over again. So you could literally take this build into as hard of content as you wanted if you didn't mind playing like that, right? Every five seconds, you got to go into operator and dash into yourself, go back into Warframe, shoot some things for a few seconds, go back into operator, you know? I mean, it is a mechanic in the game, so I figured I would just tell you guys that that is a defensive choice, one of your best defensive choices. Um, as far as your offensive choice goes, you have Sling Strength. Uh, whenever you go into Operator and you use Slings, you chain Slings, so Void Sling twice, back to back, um, you get a 40% ability strength for 20 seconds on your Warframe, meaning more Roar damage, more Toxic Lash damage, and more Venom Dose damage. Also, if you do go down and you have Last Grasp, you have Void Strike plus your Amp damage to try and revive yourself. So there's that added bonus as well as mo for Moderai. Uh, but Moderai is definitely the offensive route. So those are pretty much your two choices. Unaru, you can strip armor and stuff. But we're already doing that with our Corrosive Shards. Zenerate gives us energy. We don't really care about that. Naramon is more for melee builds. Again, we're not really concerned about that. So it's really just between Vazarin and Moderai. Um, defense, offense. As far as your companion goes, this is again another flex slot. We really can put anything we want here depending on what we want. We can go for uh, the Nautilus to group enemies up. We can go for the Death Cube to help us with more energy. It really like whatever we want to use here. All right, nerds. Now that we are in the simulacrum, let's go ahead and showcase the Umbra version of this build. This is build. This build does have a little bit less strength, a little bit less duration, but it does have more range, enabling you to spread your spores just a little bit easier. Um, we are, again, the only thing that we're going to change is the faction mod. We are going to spawn some corrupted heavy gunners, so we do have the, fa the corrupted faction mod on. And now remember, we're not using Moderai Focus Tree or Growing Power or anything like that, so all we need to do is get some energy, Cast your four, cast your three, hold your first ability to proc your Venom Dose on yourself. Now, when you notice, I'm going to shoot this enemy in the face. The initial impact did not do a lot of damage, but then the thing that's doing a lot of the damage is the toxin. And then also, if you notice, as soon as that first enemy died, Acid Shells, the Sobek mod, then spread our toxin status to all the other enemies in the area. So again, this build, it doesn't do a lot of like burst damage, right? I mean, I guess it, it can, but the idea is you tag something and you can just kind of set it and forget it and it's going to spread the toxin to everything else in the area and then everything else will just die. Okay, so it's very simple. Acid shells spreads toxin, toxin kills, spreads more toxin, toxin kills, spreads more toxin. So as long as there's enemies within 15 meters of the target that was poisoned and dies, your toxin's going to spread again. All right, nerds, I hope you did enjoy that Saren loadout video. Like I said, this is the first video of the Warframe loadout series I plan on making for you guys. Uh, like I said, just showcasing some of my favorite builds in Warframe. Uh, but let me just reiterate, I did not come up with the concept of these builds. I didn't create these builds. I'm not claiming that they're the best versions of these builds. I just wanted to share with you guys some of the loadouts that I find to be very comfy in all kinds of different game modes. Um, and with all that said, man, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, get notified when the next video comes out. If you guys do have any suggestions on maybe what we can do better as far as the build goes, or, you know, if you guys just want to let me know what some of your favorite loadouts are, definitely drop a comment in the section down below, man. But until next time, guys, have a good one. Peace.